Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to join you this morning. I'd firstly like to uh, start by thanking Carl Smith for his welcome to country, and I would also like to acknowledge that the land we're meeting on today is the traditional land of the uh, Garner people, and I respect their spiritual relationship with the land and respect their elders past, present, and future. Uh, today, I, I come to this event in what is really my first official function um, in terms of a speaking engagement uh, as, the, as South Australia's uh, new Minister for Environment and Water. I had shadow on the tip of my tongue there because I am still getting used to calling myself the Minister. It's a, a phenomenal privilege to be able to be uh, our beautiful state's uh, steward of our environment from, a, uh, from an administrative and, uh, and ministerial level. It is uh, something that I find uh, an absolute prim privilege, a huge honour and I uh, look forward to working with many people in South Australia, particularly uh, in the, the academic and science-based community, uh, to leave a, a legacy for our future generations and, and for those who uh, are enjoying South Australia today uh, in terms of the livability of our environment and the sustainability of our natural environment. We should not and cannot underestimate the um, the phenomenal impact that a living in a, in a natural landscape like South Australia has to offer uh, can, can have on, on this society. And whether my time in this role is long or short, uh, I do hope that we can work together to, to leave a legacy uh, for future generations. I um, think it is it is a, a great opportunity to be able to open a, a conference like this, bringing together around 800 delegates uh, who have a, a passion and interest and uh, significant knowledge and understanding of uh, our natural environment and uh, the experience uh, to be able to work with government, with not-for-profit organizations, with uh, our business community to be able to uh, deliver outcomes for uh, for our natural environment. It is um I had the opportunity last night to, to look through the program for, for this uh, next couple of days of events and I was uh, actually quite uh, disheartened that I wouldn't be able to spend more than just a, a short time this morning with you because uh, my new life doesn't quite give me the flexibility to be able to sit in a conference for, for a few hours but looking through the program and seeing uh, the sorts of uh, keynote speakers, panelists and uh, and workshop uh, facilitators and contributors. Uh, I was I was jealous at the the um, calibre uh, of uh, of speakers that you will get to get to enjoy uh, at the conference over the next couple of days. And, and um, all credit to, to the department that I have the opportunity of working with uh, for organizing uh, with, you, with your partner, Sandy, uh, this, um, this great, great event. Because I, I, looking at that, that timetable, that schedule for the next couple of days, I, I was really encouraged by the number of people who've, uh, who've been brought together to provide content for the conference. I had breakfast this morning with uh, uh, with the chief executive of my department, or the acting chief executive, John Schutz, and uh, he told me that uh, there is a, a lot of energy and excitement around this conference, particularly f uh, from the, the success of the conference two years ago, uh, being able to build on that to have a particularly uh, high quality uh, program of events this time around. The, the government is only two weeks old in South Australia and uh, we have put on the table a f very strong reform agenda for environmental policy in our state. Uh, it would be my view that the last time that there was such a significant reform agenda on the table uh, was when there was last a change of government in South Australia when Labor took office in 2002 and they brought to the table a substantial amount of reform uh, in environmental policy and the government that I'm part of of, uh, is certainly very keen uh, to drive forward it's very significant reform. Uh, I, as Shadow Minister for the last 14 months, I've had the opportunity to develop 
a whole range of uh, policies which uh, were tested in the public uh, public sphere uh, over over the year leading up to the election uh, some for a longer period of time some closer to the ele the election itself and um, and I am excited to now work with the department and to work with the wider community to implement over the next four years a, a quite ambitious uh, set of uh, environmental policies we are looking uh, particularly at a suite of policies which want to harness the knowledge and understanding uh, from ex external sources, not just in government, work in partnership with South Australian communities, uh, rely on the knowledge and understanding of the science community, of the, the, the uh, academic community, of people who are working uh, in the environmental uh, arena on a day on uh, and day off basis, and also uh, relying significantly on the knowledge and understanding within communities. Uh, I know from my experience of traveling around South Australia that some of the people who've got the, the greatest understanding of, of the way the environment works are those who manage the land and, and uh, sustain the land on a day-to-day -day basis. And so uh, as I take um, take on this this role and and this ministry uh, i will be looking to forge partnerships uh, on a continual basis uh, with the community that in some ways poses a challenge because uh, i have um, responsibility for an agency which has a significant amount of uh, science and expertise built into it and many people with expertise significant expertise in specialized fields are in the room this morning now Prior to my election I, um, in 2014, I had a role in the public service around community engagement. And one of the things that I identified when driving forward a community agenda, a community engagement agenda for, for government was the, the barrier that expertism, that experience, that knowledge and understanding can actually uh, put in the way of uh, bringing a community along, along on a journey to a particular place, particularly in those areas where uh, expertise is significant and the environmental policy space is one of those areas. But rather than that being seen as a barrier, I would really challenge the audience uh, who have, are attending this conference over the next uh, couple of days to see that as an opportunity. How can we uh, look at breaking down barriers between expertise on one hand and uh, to reach a point of bringing a community along on an empowered journey on the other hand? Um, I looked through the uh, conference uh, uh, speakers and the, the uh, brief synopsis of some of the, uh, the conversations that you're going to be having over the next couple of days, and, and I see that that is something that is addressed on an ongoing basis, uh, and so I hope that those conversations are had, and, and that can be fed back into the Department of Environment and Water here in South Australia, uh, so that we can work um, better at community engagement and can be um, form those partnerships with the, uh, the scientific community and be able to communicate effectively and engage effectively with the broader community to explain why we are taking um, particular decisions and to be open to um, uh, changing our approaches uh, in order to bring that, that community along with us. While staying true to, to science and, um, and respecting uh, that knowledge and understanding that has been built up over many years and decades in, in some circumstances. The, um, the, th that challenge uh, is, is something that I, I find um, confronts me on a day-to-day -day basis as I have to balance the, um, uh, the exercising of my duties as a, as, a, as a minister who has to rely on the advice and experience and, and uh, scientific knowledge of my department while also dealing with the realities of community expectations, political needs, which are a, an unfortunate reality of this job at times, and being able to deliver outcomes for South Australian communities uh, from an environmental perspective in a timely and efficient and, and productive way.
So I, 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 I guess I leave that as a, as a challenge this morning and uh, would love to, to hear your feedback in due course and feel free to get in touch with me if you have ideas and uh, views as to how the agency, uh, the agency that I now have responsibility for can do that better. This morning we have the opportunity to, uh, well I have the opportunity to launch a, a particularly exciting project and that is the um, the SA land cover project which is a new mapping capability measuring change uh, in the landscape over time and it's a really great example of a, a government department uh, building uh, partnerships and re uh, relationships to, to deliver a project and I do need to make sure that I refer to my notes to talk about uh, to make sure I mention exactly who, who was involved in this project because the, the new SA land cover data, data set as a result of a collaboration between the South Australian Government, Geoscience Australia, the Australian Department of the Environment and Energy, uh, the Victorian State Government and the SA Natural Resource Management Boards. And, and this data set, uh, using, a remote using remote sensing data from Geosciences Science Australia's data cube, allows us to, for the first time, uh, to sp spatially map changes in land cover, including native vegetation orchards, vineyards, forestry, urban areas and wetlands over time from 1987 to 2015. So over a space of close to 30 years. And you, this morning you can see images from that uh, this data set uh, being presented uh, on the screen behind me. It is a really great example of, of government taking a, a, a leadership role uh, around science, uh, searching for and building partnerships with uh, related organizations and entities using data which the government uh, has responsibility and stewardship of anyway and putting that out into the public domain for uh, other people to be able to use to inform their, um, their decision making. Particular groups that would be interested in this would be academia, uh, local government, uh, non-government organizations and even businesses who are in the um, in the agriculture or environmental space uh, so from today uh, the SA land cover data set will be uh, available online for um, for anyone to be able to access a great example of open data, an area that uh, the previous government began to pioneer, uh, which uh, the government that I am part of is very keen to continually look for opportunities to publicly disclose data held by the government. We don't want to be holding tightly on to this information. Instead, we want to be handing it over to communities where appropriate, making it um, available to inform research, to inform business decisions, to inform better uh, outcomes in, the, in agriculture and environment and in, um, and in good decision making uh, across the board. So uh, I guess with those words, uh, I, I declare the, the data set launched, the first launch that I've done as a minister. And, um, and just in closing, I would like to thank everyone for uh, attending uh, this conference this morning. I would like to thank those who have been involved in putting together presentations which will be uh, presented over the next couple of days. Uh, I would like to thank the delegates uh, in advance for your contribution to conversations, uh, to ideas being developed over the next couple of days and I certainly look forward to talking to my department about the outcomes of this event and how my department can work really closely and the government that I am part of can partner with the, the people who are involved in this conference to deliver better outcomes for the South Australian environment. So thank you for your time and enjoy the conference.